Hello, welcome to Kosh's Tech Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to make a multicolour print part like this on any 3D printer. Let's get started. So, the first thing we need is a multipart STL. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to do it in Fusion because my Fusion is terrible and there's probably much much easier ways. The only things to remember about it is that you need to have the different bodies in a component in Fusion and then it's that component that we 3D print rather than the individual bodies. This way you end up with one STL file with multiple parts inside it. And when we get it into Super Slicer, first thing we've got to do is flip its orientation because I designed it upside down for some reason. Then we split it into parts by selecting the gear, split to parts. We then go through these parts, we select the part we want to print first and we say modify type part. The bits we don't want to print, we say modify type, modifier. Or change, yeah, change type modifier. So we go through there, we do that, generate the G code for our first part. Don't send it to print because what we're trying to achieve is one single print because if you set it to print three different times what we're going to do is reset all your homing positions and it may not exactly line up so we generate that g-code we save it down we do the same thing so we set our second piece that we want to print as the part we select everything else as modifiers the one thing we need to do this time is actually make sure that we're gonna Z-hop over these parts rather than knocking these parts. I like to do double the height of the part that I've printed first, just to be sure. So make sure you enforce it on first layer, make sure that it's gonna do everything up to at least the height of that first part. Double check your views uh, by saying, yeah, show me the travel moves. And you should see the hop up, over and down where there's spaces in this particular STL because that's where your first part is going to be sat on your print bed while you're printing. And we do the same for the third part. Save all these down, but of course we've now got three different G-code files. So, so now what? Well, first things first, I want to do something flashy on this third one and instead of just printing it as one body, I want to print this third piece as two different colours by doing a change at layer height, which is fairly simple on Slooper Slicer. You just move your slice view down to where you want your split to be, and you'll see this little plus button appear. Click on that, and it will add in a pause macro, an M600. Now, I haven't got my clipper to understand M600 yet, which is apparently fairly simple, but it seems to have eluded me. So, We've got these bits from Super Slicer, we've saved down our different parts of the STL. Now what? Because we've got three different G-code files. We don't send those to the printer one by one, because the printer will rehome in between each part. Your X and Y, unless you're really, really, really confident about your printer's homing, are not quite going to add up, uh, mesh up. Our aim is to get one single print with all of these different color changes in it without rehoming because we know then that it's definitely going to line up it's going to be flawless or as as near as flawless as you can hope to get it's still pretty impressive though so what we do is we actually open these up in a text editor i use vs code because that's what i'm used to using for yaml editing for you know any hacking around i do with scripts that sort of thing so we'll start with our first part that we're going to print as our base. We're going to use that. We're going to include in there our start print macro and our end print macro, as well as the part itself. All well and good. Before the end print macro kicks in, which is for me, this M107 command, which is, you know, turn off all your heaters, put in some spaces in there. What I then do is I put in a nozzle scrub because I have a scrubbing brush in my printer. Trust me, quality of life improvement. Get yourself a scrubbing brush in there. It's brilliant. 
I then have a purge to get the colour out so that I don't end up with mixed colours and bits of colour coming through. I probably should have gone longer than 15 mil because there's a couple of little bits in the surface of this where the wrong colour is showing through. So you, your mileage may vary. Have a play with it, see what works for you. I then put in another nozzle scrub so that after my purge I make sure that the nozzle's clean and then just put it back to exactly where it was, making sure your feed rate is fast enough that you don't get that ooze and adhesion issues and horrible bits of filament sticking around the place. Trust me, I've been there. So that's fine. I'll copy and paste that little scrub purge block with the printer pores in there as well, of course. I'll copy and paste that down a few times, however many times I know I'm going to need to change the filament. Then we get the second part of our STL G code that we've got, so our second print. Excluding the print start and the print end macros, we'll take the body of it, the actual print, and we'll put that in between our next two filament change blocks. So that after it's paused, we hit resume on the printer, and because of the order I did it, that resume comes before my purge and my second scrub. We hit resume on the printer, it'll do the purge, it'll do the second scrub after we've changed the filament, and it'll come back and continue printing in exactly the same place, no homing, so we know everything is gonna line up, it's gonna be good. Same for the third part, but on the third part, I put in my change at layer height macro, my M600, which my clipper doesn't know about. That means that I have to do the find in my third set of G-code for this M600. The bit of printing above it, again excluding the print start macro because we've already got that in. I copy and paste in. And then the below the M600 goes in my final section between my last scrub, pause, purge, scrub macro and my end G-code. So that's now all of our parts of G-code in the one file. We'll save that down, we'll send it to the printer, we'll cross our fingers and hope. Do not be disheartened if it takes you a few tries to get it. I thought I knew what I was doing because I've had some quite good success on two colour prints so far, so I thought I'll try a three or a four colour print with this part to show this off. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. This is like the third or fourth try at this because things were not quite right. I was moving too slowly and oozing macro, uh, oozing filament. I had parts that were too small, so the layer adhesion wasn't quite great because although the black and the white in this is ABS plus and therefore behaves itself very well, the yellow is just normal ABS. It didn't stick too well. So we have some trial and error in there. If you get stuck, post yourself a comment down below. If you have success, post a comment. Let us know how it went. Tell us what you printed, maybe link us something on Thingiverse. But don't forget to like and subscribe and go and have fun.